Hello self exponent, welcome back. Exponents. Uh, I will be discussing as I promised this one. A raised to x multiplied by A raised, sorry, A raised to y is equal to A raised to x plus y. Others are using m and n, it doesn't matter. I'm using x and y. That means if I have 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 2 raised to 4, then I have 2 raised to 3 plus 4, which equal to 2 raised to 7. How did it go? It will look like this. 2 times 2 times 2, that is the 2 raised to 3, multiplied by 2 times 2 times 2 is 2. Then we have 2 times 7. That's the reason why. Um, as you can only use this when you have the same base. You cannot use this when when you have, for example, 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 3 raised to 2, for example. If you have this kind of problem, then you need to, you need to, uh, you need to calculate the 2 raised to 3, and then calculate 3 raised to 2, and then multiply it 9 times, uh, or 8 times 9, 72, for example. So, you cannot use this law of exponent when we have, um, we don't have the same base. The next law of exponent that I'm going to discuss is this one. When you divide uh, two exponents with the same base, then you can use this uh, law. You can subtract their exponents. So, for example, we have 2 raised to 4 divided by 2 raised to 3. And we have 2 raised to 4 minus 3 is equal to 2 raised to 1 or just 2. Uh, why? Because of this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 2 times 2 is 2. When the numerator and denominator are equal, are the same, then it will become 1. So you can cancel that the 3 2's. So, and the only uh, remaining is 2 raised to 1 or just 2. That's, that's um, one of the reason, or that's the proof, numerical proof of this um, law of exponent. It is called division. The first one is law of exponent in multiplication. Okay, and then the next that I'm going to discuss is a raised to x, this one now, a raised to x, raised to y. Then you, all you need to do is to find the product of the exponent. That means if I have 2 raised to 4, raised to 3, and I have 2 raised to 4 times 3, which is 2 raised to 12. Why? Because if I have this one now, 2 raised to 4, multiplied by 2 raised to 4, multiplied by 2 raised to 4. You can see that I have, from the first law, I can add their exponent. Where am I? 
A raised, oh sorry, not A, it's 2. 2 raised to 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 2 raised to 12. But you don't need to do this one. You can only, you can just use this law. Then you're off with it. You're, you're good with it. The next one is this one. Why I don't have, again, my, this is my next. So that is a raised to x, b raised to x is equal to a, b raised to x. That means, if I have, I will do the other way around, if I have 2 times Three raised to four, for example, and I can do this one two times three, two times three, two times three, and then another one two times three. Then, as you can see, we have two raised to four, we have one, two, three, four, and then we have 3 raised to 4. So this also, uh, instead of doing this very, very long solution, then you can just use this equation or this law of exponent. That if you have 2 raised to 4, Multiplied by 3 raised to 4, then it is the same as to say that 2 times 3 raised to 4. This is just a review. And then the last, uh, none of the last one. The next one is this one. So that, oh wait, what happened? Where am I? Here. There I, there I am, uh, a raised to x divided by b raised to x is equal to a divided by b, in the parenthesis, raised to x. I will do the other way around again. For example, I have 2 divided by 3 raised to 4. That means I have 2, two thirds multiplied by 2 thirds multiplied but multiplied by two thirds and then multiplied by two thirds. Then as you can see, I have two raised to four. I can multiply all just the the numerator first. And then I can also multiply the denominator. Three raised to four. As you can see, you can use this. These are the tools. You can use them when you need them, but you need to know when to, to use them. It's very important. And uh, now, the next that I'm going to discuss is this one. I have a lot of students who have a problem with this. It's very easy. It's very easy to prove. It's very easy to understand, but I have a lot of students who doesn't understand it. So let's see. We have this, a raised to 0 is equal to 1. For example, I can, I can prove that by using this rule. I can do this one. a raised to x divided by a raised to y is equal to a raised to x minus 1, y. As we, as you have learned in uh, rational expressions or in fractions, when the numerator, uh, numerator and the denominator are equal, then you have the answer of 1. For example, 2 divided by 2, that is 1. So, for example, I have a raised to x divided by a raised to x, that is 1. 
But if we're going to use this law of exponent, so I have a raised to x divided by a raised, raised to x is equal to a raised to x minus x. That is equal to a raised to 0. That means a raised to x divided by a raised to x is equal to a raised to 0, which is also equal to 1. That's why we have a raised to 0 is equal to 1. I will give some more example. For example, 5 raised to 3 divided by 5 raised to 3. As we know, that is 1. But we can use the, the, the law on division. Law of exponent and div division. So we have 3 minus 3. That is also 5 raised to 0. So any number raised to 0 is equal to 1. If you don't understand the proof or the explanation at this moment, you will understand it later, but at this moment, you can just accept it. <laughs> I usually say that to my students, that they, they can accept it now and then understand it later. But, but there are a lot of students who doesn't understand this equation, this law. And then, the last that I'm going to discuss is this one, the negative exponent. a raised to x. Negative x is equal to a divided by a raised to x. This one, the last one there. As with the zero exponent, I have a lot of students finding a hard time understanding this uh, law of exponent. Okay, let's see. How could we show that? For example, 5 raised to, raised to 3 divided by 5 raised to 7, for example. And then we have, according to this law, on uh, division on exponents, then we have 5 raised to 3 minus 7. And we have 5 raised to... Uh, negative 4. That's, that's it. Then we have, but, as you can see, I can, fa I can, um, write also my, my expression into factor form. 5 raised to 3 is like, is the same as 5 times 3 times 3, ah, 5 times 5 times 5, sorry, and my divisor, is 5 times 5 times 5, 7 times. We will do this. Maybe it's boring, but you will, you will understand later. 1, 1, 1. And then the numerator now is 1, and the denominator is 5 raised to 4. That means, that means, 5 raised to negative 4, is equal to 1 divided by 5 raised to positive 4. Remember now, when we have negative as a numerator, then we, we kick that, um, that, ex, that expression, and then we have 1 as numerator, and then the, the denominator will be the same expression with a positive exponent. Okay, well, let's try one more time. We have 3 raised to 3, and then 3 raised to 9. And we have 3 raised to 3 minus 9 is equal to 3 raised to negative 6. Doing the factor, uh, 3 raised to 3 times 1, we will say. No, I'm not going to put one there. It will, it will uh, confuse you. And then we have 3 raised to 3 times 3 raised to 3 times 3 raised to 3. As you can see now, this one will be 1. Then I have already 1 divided by 3 raised to 6 according to this law the multiplicate the law of exponent on in multiplication 
So as you can see, 3 raised to negative 6 is equal to 1 divided by 3 raised to positive 6. The same is true when you have uh, the, the, there is a subsequent uh, rule on this also. If I have, I have 1 divided by 3 raised to negative 6, then that, il that will be equal to 3 raised to 6. Why? Because 3 raised to 6, uh, 3 raised to uh, this one, this one, is the same as 3 raised to 0, as we have decided, as we have proved uh, in my, uh, the previous one. And then 3 raised to negative 6, then we have 3 raised to 0 minus negative 6. As you can see now, it is 3 raised to positive 6. So it is very important that you will understand this. Hmm? I hope you, you understood a little bit. This is just um, a repetition on, on laws of exponent. But uh, for those who have uh, um, read the uh, basic algebra, but for those who didn't, then this is a very simple explanation of the laws of exponent. So, I hope it helped you a little bit. And then next time, then I will be discussing more examples on the zero exponents and positive exponents. Uh, negative exponents. See you there. And that's good, actually, because if we were to add this, well, we'd get some pretty big numbers. And that's no good. So, uh, by the order of operations, we've got to do the exponents first. So, if we looked at this negative 2 over 5, we have that four times. And in this case, we have four negatives. Four is even, so we know our answer is positive. We don't even have to worry about the negatives then. And we got 2 times 2, times 2, times 2, four twos. So 2, 4, 8, 16. And the denominator is 5 times 5, times 5, times 5, which would be, I want to say 625. It's a big number. <clears throat> I skipped the first set of 5s. But that would give you the 625. The next thing we got to do is find out what 5 over 4 is multiplied by itself three times. So 5 fourths. This one also will give us a fraction. Well, 5 times 5 is 25 times 5. We just stop there at 125. And 4 times 4 is 16. Times 4 is 64. So really what we have is 16 over 625 times 125 over 64. So, we got 16 times 125, so there's the work for that. So this equals 2,000 over, we got to do 625 times 64. So there's the work for the denominator. Alright, now this is only applicable when the numbers end with zeros. But we can cancel out these zeros. It's kind of like we just divided both of these by 100. And when we look at this without those zeros, we have 2 over 40. Both of these are even, so we can divide both of them by 2. And we get 1 over 20. Done. So that's our first fraction expanded. The second fraction expanded, right? So this is what we have overall. Again, we, we're not worried about the negatives because we have an even number of negatives. So we know our answer is a positive. But uh, see how we have these three fives here in the numerator? Well, they're going to cancel three fives out in the denominator as well. So those kind of get canceled away. This is just a different way to look at it, okay? Not only this, but if we look at these two twos multiplied together, would give us four. 
these two mul two multiply together will give us four. They cancel each other out with these two fours. So in the numerator, there's nothing left. So I could just say there's a one. We can multiply all those by a phantom one. Then we've got five times four, which is twenty. Now I did that a little quick, but um, that may not be as obvious as it is to other people. So.